Opening our Bible again to Psalms 139. And it seemed like I got bogged down here in these Psalms, doing Psalm 73, along with Psalms 139. And we're going to talk about it a little bit further today, Psalm 39. A little bit of review, and a little bit of overview, and a little bit of view. <laughs> I guess it's a way I just thought of that as they were singing. But anyway, we're, we're just taking our time, thumbing along in these verses of Psalms 139. A psalm of praise. It starts out with the praise. David is giving praise to God. He's good for that. And of course, the Psalms, the, the complete book of Psalms, is the, the praise and prayer book of Israel. And so Psalms 139 closes with prayer. Praise at the beginning and prayer at the end. And I want to talk about it a little bit further today and just uh, kind of get back into this passage that passages that we've been studying and uh, given an answer to those of the wicked. I got this started in Psalm 73:11. That wicked crowd that uh, Asaph talked about with their pride, their pretension, their prosperity, their popularity, their perdition, and on down the list in Psalm 73 that David almost got to uh, got, uh, got aside from God and slipped aside when he saw the prosperity of the wicked. But anyway, the wicked had to say, uh, does God, how doth God know, and is there knowledge in the Most High? Well, we're, we're answering that question with Psalms chapter 139. And I'll not take the time to uh, read a lot of scripture on this day, but I will will kindly give us a little overview in a different view for a few minutes this morning. And just obey the Lord. And I was studying in my study this week and got to looking at this Psalms over and over and over again and, and trying to keep keep myself from doing from doing so much repetition. And of course the art of learning is repetition over and over and over again. And we start this lesson on this day and talk about Theology. I mentioned that. I mentioned that in I think on last weekend, one of the messages I preached. This this psalm is setting forth God and His great divine attributes. The attribute who our God is and what our God is. And so that reminds my heart. This is the setting of Psalm 139, a psalm of theology the doctrine theology is the doctrine of God the teaching of God and uh, it is scriptural for me to stand in this pulpit on this Lord's day and talk about doctrinal truth I was preaching years ago in Knoxville Tennessee in a fellowship meeting and I didn't know what the people believed I just got called on to preach and I preached on doctrine and boy that pastor he sure he had him a spell. He didn't. He didn't come direct to me, but he did to them that was conducting the services, the fellowship. And he said, "We're not a doctrine. We don't preach doctrine." Well, I had another connected up with that. And said uh, doctrine just confuses people. And 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 I tell you, I, I've been trying to spend my years by the help and grace of God. Since 1976, when God called me, sent me out to preach the gospel and the good word of God, it took my dad, it took him going out of this world for me to get my life straightened up and get. I'd been saved for a long time, but it took my dad going home to be with the Lord. And I tell you, God got my attention and I got in this blessed old book, amen. And I'd been singing in a quartet for a while and, 
And I tell you, the Lord said, you're going to have to give it up and them cigarettes are smoking. And I let both of them go. Amen. The singing and the smoking. And so God's been teaching my heart. I, un I understood a long time ago when God called me that I'm going to have to get myself in this Bible. Amen. And I, I, I'm going just the way the Lord wants me to go on this day. But in 2 Timothy 2.15. Paul said, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I want us to turn now, we're holding our place in Psalm 139. And this may not be the ordinary way that preachers do, but I'm doing it on this day, taking our study. We're going to talk about this theology a little bit of Psalms 139 having a reference to God's divine perfections, His attributes of, uh, of omnipotence. Uh, omniscience is all knowing and his omnipresence is all present and omnipotence is all powerful but we, we get to the source of this uh, theology on this day and we're turning to Titus chapter number two and this is on my heart and I'm just kind of getting it alongside with our lessons that we're doing and 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 we'll we'll continue it the good Lord willing if I'm able to be here tonight in Titus chapter number 2. I want to turn to for the start of our message on this day. And here where Paul has been writing and the church had grown careless uh, when it come to doctrine and draw, uh, grown uh, careless when it come to, to the uh, order in the church and and performing good works and so Titus is is has been pinned down how to address and Titus one is pastoral it emphasis on pastoral work and chapter two is on doctrinal being sound in doctrine and chapter three is on the performing of good works amen but in Titus chapter two and verse one and here we see he's speaking to the pastors and the preachers and those that God has ordained and God has so chosen to uh, preach the gospel and the good word of God. And verse 1, he said, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. And that's what we're doing in Psalm 139. We're giving out sound doc doctrine, the doctrine of God, theology as I've called it. And then he speaks to the aged men in verse 2, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, and sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. And God give us some men that have been down the way. And I, that's what hurts Morning Star Baptist Church on this Lord's Day. We don't have a big number of people and especially aged people that have been down the road and a men with wisdom, men that know something about the Word of God, men that are faithful and uh, honest and sound in faith and charity and patience. And then he not only speaks to the pastors in verse 1 and to the to the aged men in verse 2 but he speaks to the aged women in verse number 3 through verse 5 and I'll take the time to read it the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becoming holiness not false accusers not given to much wine teachers of good things that they may Teach the young women to be sober and to love their husbands and to love their children, to be discreet, chaste keepers at home, good obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemy. And I do say that Paul, I tell you, as he wrote to Titus, is, is including not only the pastors in being sound in doctrine uh, and, and the aged men being sound in faith, but here he's talking about these aged women, women that be able to teach the young women and, and, and the children. And we used to have that here when we had a lot of young folk and had 
had had those women that uh, I'll tell you had had given themselves to the Lord and knew something about the Bible and would teach the younger. Amen. And here and set forth an example uh, for those that women to to be obedient to their husbands that the word of God be not blasphemed. And then he talks to the young men in verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. And he said in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine showing uncorruptness gravity and sincerity sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say to you and then he talks to the servants amen and here he said exhort servants to be obedient to their own masters and to please them well in all things not answering again and here's the verse I'm reading to not prolonging that but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior uh, in all things and so I, I'm given a note for sound teaching and sound Bible doctrine amen from this authorized King James Bible and so we have approached Psalms 139 uh, not only as a psalm ascribing to uh, the divine perfections uh, or the attributes of God those things that uh, that speak of a perfect God amen uh, but all oh, a psalm of theology amen uh, uh, taking in these great attributes and and perfections and and on and on last Sunday we talked about the infancy of God a God uh, who is not limited uh, a God who is not restricted amen uh, and so I, I say on this day uh, we need sound doctrine in these days in these days of false teaching uh, in these days of uh, uh, false uh, preachers and and all all this thing in the realm of falsehood that's headed up by the devil himself and and of course making way for the false Christ to come but but in a day of falling away the 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 apostasy uh, the declension that's uh, on us in this age uh, and of course this age is not going to end up with some great big revival that some of these charlatans talk about uh, I tell you all hereafter has to get popular in praise and uh, fill their pockets and uh, uh, build great uh, great uh, churches so called uh, but I tell you this this day of grace uh, is going to end with the apostasy of uh, the professing church and God's man has been called and ordained and sent out uh, I tell you, thank God uh, to preach all of the Bible. Amen. I don't spare doctrine for any, I, that to spare, I tell you, to uh, set aside doctrine in any church I've ever preached. Amen. Just rare back what the Lord's laid upon my heart. Amen. But we, we talk about. Um, preaching uh, sound doctrine uh, it will refute the atheism uh, that denies the existence of God uh, and if Psalm 139 says anything uh, it's a tribute to the very existence of God uh, I label it the subsistency of God uh, oh thank God uh, the existence of God uh, and David had a relationship to God and with God as a man I tell you chosen of God to give us some 70 some psalms in the book of Psalms amen a man after God's own heart though he failed his failure was not final amen he had a relationship 
with God. Amen. And that's what we're seeing uh, in verse 1 through verse 12 uh, of Psalm 139. Uh, David's relationship. Uh, oh, thank God. Uh, uh, this one that give a lot of the Psalms. Uh, thank God. And, and due respect to praise uh, to our God and honor uh, and glory to the one that was deserving. Uh, and of course he ends up in his prayer. Amen. Uh, but we see atheism uh, is refuted when we preach sound doctrine. Amen. Atheism that denies the very existence of God. In Psalm 14, 1 uh, the psalmist said the fool has said the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And when it all comes down to there ain't no really hate any atheist. He said the fool has said there is no God. He actually says there is a God when he says there ain't one. But oh, I tell you, God has given us enough proof in this King James Bible that He's the Creator God. Thumbing over to Romans chapter 1, right here in the Scripture. And here Paul is, uh, he, he's uh, here going to talk to, to us about these that suppress or hold the truth of unrighteousness, uh, unrighteousness and, and the, the, against all ungodliness uh, and unrighteousness of men. Uh, and he said in verse 19, uh, Because that which may be known of God uh, is manifest in them, uh, for God has showed it unto them. Now here's a verse. I'm getting right, right with our lesson on this day. Sound doctrine. When I preach the doctrine of God, even in Psalm 139, it'll re refute the idea of atheism. Or the atheist that says there's no existence of God. But he said, because before the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He said, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts was darkened and man was born from his mother's womb with a depraved nature with a depraved heart with a heart set on rebellion against God but man can go down way down below uh, below depravity to become a complete a apostate where man is given up by God God gave up their spirit God gave up their body and God gave up their soul right here in, in Psalm, rather in Romans chapter 1 why because when they knew and that means they knew God had made him set in the far regions of Africa on this Lord's day where God's names not mentioned in the regions beyond where Christianity is not God's made himself to the heathens or by his conscience and by the creation of God himself man don't have no excuse and I'm saying on this day that sound doctrine will refute atheism amen and then sound doctrine will refute agnosticism these isms I'm dealing with and I, I didn't expect to go this way on this day and I'm just following what the Lord's impressed them. I meant to go some other way. Amen. But anyway, sound doctrine will refute agnosticism, which means uh, man uh, cannot know God. Well, I, I beg to differ. Amen. Oh, I say in Jeremiah chapter 9, uh, right here on the pages of Scripture, uh, Jeremiah the great 
prophet of God penned it down. And I'm thumbing over to Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. And this King James Bible said, and I believe I've got the right verse, Jeremiah 9, 23. And this Bible said, Am I not, am I, am I God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God far off can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him question saith the Lord do I not fill heaven and earth saith the Lord and I have I've heard that the prophets said I've heard what the prophets have said they prophesy lies in my name and and saying I have dreamed and I have dreamed how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies. Yea, there are prophets of deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor as their father hath forgotten. And so we're seeing here Jeremiah the great prophet of God all oh, lets us know that God is knowable. Amen. And I, I, I had the wrong verse, sir, but I kindly tied it in anyway. Amen. But I'm looking at it. Not Jeremiah 9 23 uh, said, Thus saith the Lord. Uh, oh, you can count on that phrase. Uh, what God said, it's settled. Amen. Uh, what God said is sure. Uh, and better man take notice uh, when God speaks. Amen. Uh, he had the first words uh, and he'll have the last words. Amen. Uh, but he said, Jeremiah said, uh, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty men glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but he let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you, although the agnostics come along and, and say you cannot know God, I beg to differ. Amen. Oh, he said, it, it bringeth glory and delight to me, God said, he that understandeth and knoweth me. Oh, the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. And I, I tell you, had not the Holy Ghost of God I gripped my heart many years ago at the Ridgeview Baptist Church. I was sitting in the little old choir off the head in the old church. And I tell you, oh, the old man of God preached a brother Samuel Simmerly, who it was. Amen. And thank God the Holy Ghost gripped my heart for the first time in all my years. Amen. And thank God I fell in that altar and fell on my face and cried for the mercy of God. And God saved my wretched soul. Amen. <coughs> And from that very day on uh, to this day, this side of eternity, uh, God's been letting me know about God, amen, uh, and about His Son uh, and the Holy Spirit uh, I give credit to on this day. Uh, but the agnostic says, uh, man cannot know God. Uh, and then the evil, that sound doctrine will not only refute atheism uh, and agnosticism, but sound doctrine will refute evolutionism. Oh, I tell you, that old whole long theory that's went down through the history of time uh, that says man evolved. Man just sprang from a monkey. Hogwarts on that idea. I read enough in Psalm 139 on the last weekend as David gives these great divine attributes of our God in relation to the Creator 
God. Amen. I tell you, it would have to take God to bring everything into existence like He did. Amen. Just spoke and it come to pass. Amen. The Creator God that brought all things into existence on nothing. And by the way, on this Sunday morning, the same God that makes it consist. Amen. Of the same God that's in full control of all things. Amen. Psalm 66, Isaiah 66, 1. I said in the precious Word of God, and I got a thumb over there to get it started right. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 1. And he said, The heavens is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Well, that's what I, Isaiah wrote about Jehovah God. Amen. Heaven is, he said, the saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Don't sound like man's taking over here in this verse. They talk about Mother Earth and the old man upstairs. But I remind you, there's a sovereign God that's on his throne. Amen. A God that's done spoke that the earth is his footstool. And he said, where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? And God cannot be confined to just one place. Amen. I'm glad he's a God that's everywhere. Psalm 139. Amen. His omnipresence. He's a God that's everywhere. And when I look at the first verse of Psalm 139, two words together, O oh Lord. That's O oh Jehovah. Amen. And I'm not saying O oh LD. O oh Oh, Jehovah. Oh, that speaks of His sovereignty. That speaks of His eternality. That speaks He's, he's everything. Not in everything, but He's everything. Amen. Oh, thank God. But evolution says that man sprang from a monkey. Oh, evolution says everything's involving. But man's got it all turned around. It's God that made all things. Amen. Oh, God that brought it in uh, to creation, a creative God. And then uh, sound doctrine not only refutes atheism uh, and refutes agnosticism uh, and refutes evolutionism, uh, but sound doctrine uh, uh, refutes poly. Theism that says there are more than one God, more gods. I'm telling you, and oh, I'm telling you, we've read from Psalm 73 enough. All the ungodly that's in the world, all I tell you, they got their gods of their own choosing, and all down through the history of this Bible, I tell you, I, I, I scripture after scripture, I tell you, that says. A man's going to worship something. All the gods of gold and silver and the like. But I'm glad, thank God, you and I sit in this house on this day. I would believe there's one God and our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 said, There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Oh, thank God. Not three gods, but one God in three persons. And I know that stammers my mind and stammers a lot of folks' mind. Somebody said, explain it. It's unexplainable. I'm just believing what God said. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy 
Holy Ghost. Amen. And so sound doctrine will refute uh, a polytheism. Uh, and then in this next uh, next and uh, uh, sound doctrine will repute pantheism, which says uh, that God is everything uh, and everything is God. And I remember years ago when we were, were living up in towns and uh, and this this older gentleman and his wife moved a few few lots down from where we where we lived and and I got to talking to him one day and and trying to inquire where he went to church he said well I go to church every day I worship the mountains and and on the rivers and all like that and of course uh, he he believed that God was in everything and of course God had sure made the beautiful mountains in this area hey man and the lakes and the seas and the ocean uh, and I'm telling you uh, pantheism uh, oh it's refuted by sound doctrine uh, when they say that God is everything and everything is God but I'll tell you when we start out with Psalms 139 uh, we're reminded on this day uh, oh Lord uh, He is everything Amen uh, and so we, we've looked a little bit on the theology side of Psalm 139 now let's just close this out and we'll pick up Lord willing if, if the Lord willing tonight to uh, right back here in this study but we're seeing David now uh, the, the writer of this Psalm 139 I've said from verse 1 through 12 uh, we see David's relationship to God uh, and with God amen uh, and comes with a relationship to God uh, fellowship amen uh, something to know about our God and David knew that God was an all knowing God an all seeing and an all searching God David had learned that God was an all present God on all sides of the believer by his presence to protect preserve provide and to promise to us as his children not only the Israel of God but the church of God and so we see his relationship Amen. Or oh, a close relationship to God. Amen. And when he ends up the Psalm 139, he ends it up with a prayer in verse 23-24. We see not only his relationship, but we see his revival. Amen. When he said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. And I know many of these psalms were written uh, to depict the sufferings uh, and the sojourn of the people of Israel. They depict a lot of their sufferings that they go through with and in, in a prophetic sense uh, in the sufferings that will come down the way in the awful time of tribulation. But I'm glad on a personal note. Uh, amen. Uh, we see not only David's relationship to God and with God but we see David's revival all oh, thank God in verse 23 24 amen a revival that will affect our ways amen a revival that will affect our will a revival that will affect our words a revival that will affect our, our word bouts amen and so David knowing and all searching all all seeing God all oh God I tell you I had made that instilled that in David's heart to write it down amen but he said search me oh God search me oh God I'd say it David would say revival for me amen oh if it's ever a time that God's people I tell you got connected up with God Get our hearts right with God. Get doctrinally sound on this 
Bible. Amen. And put that doctrine to work in our heart. Amen. And that's what David's doing. Amen. Knowing all these great perfections of God. Knowing God Himself and the person of His Son, the Lord Jesus. We can say, search me, O God. Know my heart. Oh, I'm glad He's an omniscient God. He knows us from within and without. He said, try me. Amen. I say a lot of the times our sojourn is made up. I tell you, trials and, and troubles and tribulations. That's our lot in this world, I'm telling you. And it'll always do for our good when God brings us through the fire. Amen. That's what Job said. I'm telling you, man, that well, I tell you, went down in the history of this Bible of much affliction and much suffering. And Job said, he said, I, he knows the way I take. And when he's tried me, I shall come forth as go. Peter said, First Peter 1, 7, at the trial of your faith, which is most precious, all than gold. Amen. Oh, after you've tried, you may bring it to the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus. And he said, No, my thoughts. Amen. He's already pinned down in Psalm 139 that God knows our words before we speak them. He knows the very thoughts and the intents of our heart. But David is searching and he's asking God for revival. Amen. And he said, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Amen. Right doctrine will help us. I don't know about God. Uh, and and course doctrine of Christ know about Christ and and course the doctrine of the Holy Spirit pneumology uh, know about the Spirit and on down the list and the great doctrines of the faith and all oh, I'm telling put our doctrine in 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 fruition. Amen. What we believe, put it into practice. Amen. And I said doctrines, what we've been taught. Amen. We're getting taught doctrine in Psalm 139. And that'll help us thank God. I, we, we could say with David, if there be any wicked way in me, lead me to the way everlasting. Amen. All that God would help us uh, how to get, sa get sa uh, settled in this book. Amen. Uh, all the days that we've got left. Thank God. All that we'd pray like David. Uh, and if there be any wicked way in me. And God knows our ways. He knows our whereabouts. Uh, he knows our, our uh, He knows our, 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 our wrongs and our, our, our way we're I'm telling you, but he wants us to call on him. Amen. And so David's relationship, and then David's reflection, he reflect upon the thought, the thought that God thought of him. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad there's a God that thinks of his children. Amen. In this low land of sorrow, sometimes it seems that he ain't got a friend. Sometimes it seems that way, and I'm not pulling a pity party in this house of God on this day but sometimes it literally seems like there ain't a friend around and I'm glad we sung about this morning that there's no friend like the lowly Jesus hey, no not one thank God and I'm glad he's one thank God that thinks about his children amen as he sits there in the heavens on this day at the right hand of God the Father he's seated there in our body behalf. Amen. He seated there as our great high priest and touched with our own in Firmities. Amen. And if you fail to pray to Him on this day, I serve notice He already prayed for you. Amen. And David then, he reveals his denunciations in Psalm 130. I told you a little bit of overview, a little new review of what we've been studying in Psalm 113. But David reveals his denunciations in verse number 19. 
He said, Surely thou will slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thy enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, I, O Lord, that hate thee? And I, am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them as my enemies. Amen. And there's a perfect way to hate people. Amen. And the way God hates. Amen. God that denounces uh, all sin and wicked. God's not for, he, He's not for sin. He's for sinners, alright. He, he sent His Son to die for them. But He's not for sin. He's not promoting and condoning sin. And, and God's people, when we get in a right relationship with God, Amen, when we think on Him and let His thoughts be our thoughts. Amen. Uh, let our ways be His ways. Let our will be His will. Amen. We will surely denounce wickedness and evil. Amen. And so just a 